Now, Father, I thank you right now that every ear is anointed to hear the word of God. Every heart is good ground to receive the word of God. And Father, I declare that your word will do what it sets out to do. You will watch over your word, the incorruptible sea, God. Father, we incline our hearts towards you, towards your love, towards your word. And we declare that we have peace in the midst of these turbulent times. Peace is not a place. Peace is not a thing. Peace is a person. And the prince of peace, God. Your son came and died. You sent him and he died. God, for us to be free, peaceful in the midst of any situation or circumstance. Now, Father, I thank you for every adult hearing my voice. I thank you for every youth hearing my voice. I thank you for every child hearing my voice. I declare they are anointed to receive wisdom from your word. They are postured to receive wisdom from your word. One word from you can change a thousand generations. Father, I declare that I speak clearly. You speak clearly through me. Make it plain. Make it simple. Wisdom is the principal thing. Father, we declare in all of our getting, we will get understanding in the name of Jesus. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And XL Church and our visitors online said, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Lord. Uh, I'm excited to be here this morning and minister the word of God, uh, 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 you know, to you, to the world. As you're watching us there, uh, we have six avenues. You can check us out there. I think it's Facebook Live, YouTube, Apple TV, Roku TV, right there on the church app, XL Church app, as well as uh, the website there. You can catch us live. And I pray um, <clears throat> that the Word of God speaks to you. Last week, we talked about, you know, a lifestyle of prayer in the midst of reality. And, you know, you say a lifestyle of prayer in the midst of reality. Yes, the reality is the pandemic is here. People are dying. The reality is you can catch this virus if you don't take precautions. So we've reached the point of reality. We're not ignoring reality. We live in a higher spiritual reality as we walk by faith and not by sight. We're not saying that it's not a reality. We're just saying we live in one as believers that trumps that reality, and that's called spiritual reality. But we talked about praying and having a prayer life in the midst of reality. And one of, the thing, one of the things that we've always taught in this church about prayer is, it's the chief discipline of abiding in God and God abiding in you. You know, it's not enough just to go to church. It's not enough just to say you know the word. It's not enough just to just say you read your Bible. You have to abide in God according to John 15. You abide in him and him in you. And that chief abiding, that chief discipline is prayer. So we talked about prayer in the midst of reality. And, you know... <clears throat> We've gotten all the answers we need right now. We went through the fear. We've had the questions. We've gotten the answers. We've reached the point now of reality. Reality. And right behind reality, we have to make adjustments to what's happening around us. And I don't want you to feel guilty. I don't want you to feel shame. I don't want you to feel guilty about uh, 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 not doing everything you used to do when you left your home and went to work in a brick and mortar system. I don't want you to feel guilty because God... God has shown himself strong in your life. You have to open your eyes and see the goodness of God that's happening all around you in the land of the living. Now, the title for today, um, the title for today is going to be living life with perfect peace. Living life with perfect peace. And how many people know in this time, in this life, there are ebbs and flows, life bell curves. There's ups, there's downs, there's ins, there's outs, there's babies born, there's people going home to be with the Lord. You know, there's jobs being, uh, 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 people being employed, people being unemployed. The life is a bell curve, it's up and down. But Jesus told us, be of good cheer. Because I've overcome all the troubles that's going to come at you in this life. But we want to learn how to live life with perfect peace. Perfect peace. Perfect peace. I want you to catch those two words. Perfect peace. Not peace that comes from your job. Not peace that comes from your savings account. Not peace that comes from all of your supplies you have stacked up. 
Not peace that comes from your career. Not peace that comes from your business. But I'm talking about perfect peace. And God bookends our life with perfect peace. Peace. So whatever we're going through in the middle of that uh, uh, of these times, he's bookended with I put perfect peace on the front end of your life and on the back end of your life and everything that happens in between. I want to show you how to live with perfect peace. Amen. Glory to God. Now, John 16 tells us uh, verse 33. He said, Jesus said, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. He says in this world you will have trouble. He says, but be of good cheer. Look at the posture we should have. Why should we be of good cheer? Because Jesus said, I have overcame the world and everything in it. And in this time, Jesus, which is not a place, he's not a thing, he's a person. And the peace is not a place or a thing. Peace for us as believers is a person, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want to launch off here uh, in Psalms 20. I want to go to Psalms 20 uh, here this morning and talk about, or we'll just lay a quick foundation. You know, David, you know, you know, David, David was a bad dude. David was a praying man. David was a worshiping man. David, David was a warrior. And, 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 and right here in Psalms 20, What's happening is he, 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 he's in a war. <laughs> and his opponents, his opponents, they have horses and chariots. And it's recorded that he killed 7,000 of them. 7,000 in this opposition. And, 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 and he begins to, a psalm sprung out of, of what, what, what David did. Psalm trust, Psalms 20, verse 7. He says, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. But we will remember, put yourself in remembrance of your covenant with God. We will remember the name of our Lord, God. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of our Lord, God, and they are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Now, David was at it with the Syrians. And what was happening was David was saying, listen, my opponent is trusting in something else. My opponent is trusting in this thing over here. My opponent is trusting in horses and chariots. He says, but my trust is in the Lord. And trust anchored in God gives birth to this perfect peace I'm talking about. Why? Because God, God is peace. Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. He is our perfect peace. And David said, listen, I don't care about what's going on around me. I don't care what kind of tools my opponent has. I don't care what's going on in this world. I don't care about your horses. I don't care about your chariots. I trust in God. And trust in God, firm, anchored trust in God, it gives birth to this perfect peace we're going to talk about this morning. Glory to God. Let's go to Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. Thank you, Lord. Woo, glory to God. Well, I can smell those eggs and sausage all the way through the camera. Y'all are getting down. My goodness gracious. Woo! I can't eat eggs and sausage because I don't eat meat. But I can think about it. I can reminisce. You know, grandma's good old cooking. Grandma's good old cooking on Sunday morning. Biscuits, cheese, eggs, cheese, grits, little waffles, little pancakes, little, little syrup running over into the grits. And man, a little bacon on the side. Man, it was just off the chain, off the Richter scale. And I'm telling you, I can smell it coming all the way through the camera. Matter of fact, save me a plate. I'm, I'm going to swing by there after I get done with this. <laughs> Isaiah 26. Glory to God. Immediately, if you could, get this ready for me in the Amplified and the Passion Translation. Isaiah 26, God made an amazing promise to the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Open ye the gates, 
and the righteous nation shall keep the truth, may enter, that keeps the truth may enter in. Verse 3 is where we're going to get to. You will keep him. Him who? You. Him who? Us. Him who? Your mother out of state. Him who? Your father out of state. Him who? Your family out of state. Him who? Your, 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 your parents or your grandparents or your great-grandparents that's in a senior living facility. He says, you would keep him in perfect peace. Watch this. Whose mind, somebody say mind right there in your living room, whose mind is stayed on thee, watch this now, because he trusts in thee, verse 4, trust ye in the Lord or you in the Lord forever. You know, your trust in God right now is not a temporary thing to get you through the coronavirus, to get you through this pandemic. He says, look, trust in me when it's good, trust in me when it's bad. Trust in me when it's up, trust in me when it's down. This perfect peace comes from trust and keeping our minds stayed on God. He says, trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Now, let's see this in the Amplified. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Open the gates that, that, that the righteous may enter. The one that remains faithful and trustworthy. Next one. So you will keep in perfect peace, perfect and constant peace. Look at that. Perfect and constant peace. We're not up and down. Perfect and constant peace. The ones Whose mind, look at the tendingness. You have to tend to the word of God. Tend to your spirit, man. Tend to the things of God. Whose mind is steadfast. That word steadfast means uh, you're just resolute. You're unwavering. You're firm and you're fixed. Steadfast, that is committed and focused on you. So you don't want to be committed and focused on the news. Committed and focused on your timeline. You want to be committed and focused on the Lord. This is how we have perfect peace in both how? Inclination and character. You know, you should not be losing your cool as a believer. You should be inclined. You should be inclined towards the things of God to be in this perfect peace. He says both in inclination and character because he trusts and takes refuge in you with hope and confident expectation. That is what I want you to get out of this. Hope and confident expectation. Expectation. Next verse. Trust confidently. See, this perfect peace is going to come from us trusting confidently in the Lord. Watch this. Not a temporary time. Not when the stocks go up. Not when you go back to work. Not when you go back to the brick and mortar. Not when. You, not. He says, trust confidently in the Lord forever. He is your fortress, your shield, your banner. For the Lord God, watch this, is an everlasting rock. That's what he means when he says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. He says, I am an everlasting rock in your life. And if we're going to ever walk it, l- learn to live in this perfect peace, we must know that God is not here for a temporary time. Not, God is not in and out. God does not have one foot in and one foot out of your life. He says, I am your everlasting rock. Watch this. Timeless rock of the ages. Set your faith right there. There's not enough to have just peace because you got a few thousand dollars put away. That's nothing. You got to have perfect peace in the Lord, in the everlasting rock. The rock of ages. You got to have perfect peace, confidently trusting in the Lord, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's see it in the uh, the Passion Translation, please. Thank you, Lord. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Perfect peace. Perfect peace. Can we see it in the Passion Translation real quick? Perfect peace. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I'm going to read it to you. Perfect, the Passion Translation. Verse 3, uh, Isaiah 26, 3. Perfect, absolute peace surrounds those who, whose imagination are consumed with you. Their imaginations, their minds are consumed 
with you. They confidently trust in you. Yes, trust in the Lord Yahweh forever and ever. The Lord God is your rock of ages. Let's look at this word perfect. Perfect simply means having all the desired or required elements. <laughs> having all of desired, all of the desired and required elements. Watch this. Perfect also means free from any flaw. See, God's peace was, is free from any flaw. There's no cracks in this foundation of peace. There's no cracks in this per perfect peace that God is talking about. He says perfect means free or free of any flaw. Also, it means highly suitable for someone. Woo! Perfect peace. This perfect peace is highly suitable for the believer who's anchored in God. They, their trust is anchored in God. Let's look at this word peace. Woo, I love this. Peace simply means freedom from disturbance. Glory to God. Freedom from disturbance. And God says, I, he says, my peace is not even flawed. My peace doesn't have cracks in it. He, he, says, he says it's perfect. It's free from disturbance. There's a mental calm that should be coming over us as believers. This, this, this perfect peace, it, there should be a mental calm, regardless of the reports, regardless of what the media is saying. There should be a mental calm for those of us whose trust is anchored in God. And I truly believe that your trust is anchored in God, and that trust anchored in God is giving birth to this perfect peace I am talking about. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Who is it that God keeps in perfect peace was my next question. Who is it that God keeps in perfect peace according to Isaiah 26, verse 3 through 4? The, 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 number one, he says, those whose mind is steadfast, firm, fixed, and unwavering. So who is it that God keeps in perfect peace? Number one, according to the scripture, those people whose mind is steadfast or those people whose mind is firm and unwavering. See, the mind is talking to the head. The, the, it, whose mind the, it, 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 is steadfast, is firm and fixed. Number two, we're answering the question according to Isaiah 26. Who is it that God would keep in perfect peace? I want to know that. The, the, number two, who trusts in you? He says, so the mind, the, 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 number one, the person whose mind is stayed steadfast on me, firm, unwavering. Number two, the one who trusts in you. Both of these expressions denote faith. Both of these expressions denotes faith. Where one is a head word for the mind, but the other is a heart word, the trust. For, trust simply means firm reliability. See, to walk in perfect peace, we got to know that we have, we have firm reliability for, in, in God. God is not going to miss it. God is not going to walk out on you. God has not left you. God has not forsaken you. We need to have a firm reliability in the things of God. Those are the people, he says, I'm going to keep in perfect peace. It's right there in the word of God. In the original Hebrew text, watch this. The term perfect peace is actually shalom, shalom. Peace, peace. This shows us how in the Hebrew language, repetition communicates, and any of you Bible scholars know this, it communicates intensity. When you see that in the word of God, it communicates intensity. It isn't just shalom, it's shalom, shalom. Perfect peace, shalom, shalom. It is as if God wasn't satisfied to give us one door of peace to walk through. He opened the double doors of peace and said, shalom, shalom. And if one, if there's, if one assurance of peace is not enough for us, he will follow it with a second and then put on top of those to, uh, those to the promise to keep us there. Think about that. Perfect peace. Shalom, shalom. Peace, peace. And then he said, I will keep you there. Now that word keep, you got to think about that. You got you, you to you go back and look at Isaiah 26 and, 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 and look at he says, he says, he says, he says, verse 3, he said, he said, Isaiah saying, God said he will keep you in perfect peace. Keep you 
in perfect peace. When I keep something in my closet, it's in that place. When I keep something in my cabinet, it's in the cabinet. When I keep uh, 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 my nieces or nephews, whatever, when I keep them for my sister, when I keep them uh, for, my, uh, uh, for, for my mother, whatever, when I keep them, they're in a place. And God says, listen, I'm going to keep you. God says, I'm going to keep you. I am the God of comfort. I'm going to keep you in perfect peace. Now, how many people know if God is keeping us in perfect peace, we are in perfect peace. Amen. Glory to God. He says, I'm going to keep you in perfect peace. Listen, we walk in perfect peace when our minds and hearts are reclined in the Lord, reclined and resting in the Lord. When you recline your chair, you don't recline your chair to start doing sit-ups. You don't recline your chair to start doing leg raises. You don't recline your chair uh, 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 to start doing uh, 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 the head and knee touches. You, you don't do that. You recline your chair to rest. You recline your chair to chill out. You recline your chair to rest. And he says, we walk in perfect peace. With, uh, we walk in perfect peace when our minds and hearts are reclined in the Lord. Nothing can cause us to stumble when we are full of God's peace. I'm fully convinced of that. And I'm telling you, the quickest way to get to God's peace is to realize your human limit limitations. And you quickly realize, a lot of people now that don't have anywhere to turn, they're quickly realizing the uncertainty is frightening to them. Thank God for the word of God who told us, don't look at tomorrow. Don't even put your soul out there in tomorrow. He says, today has enough stuff going on in it, and I'm going to take care of you in today, and I got your future covered, but you can't handle what's going to come tomorrow. Listen, you have to keep your mind stayed on God to walk in this perfect peace. Keep your mind stayed on God to walk in this perfect peace. Nothing can cause us to stumble when we are full of God's peace. You know, when I was preparing this, uh, I didn't get to bed last night at 4 o'clock. <laughs> Think of that. Got up at 6.30 and I'm ready to roll. But I didn't get to bed last night at 4 o'clock because I couldn't put the word of God down. I just couldn't put it down. I, just, I, I couldn't put the word down. And, 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 and I heard the Lord say this to me. He said a lot of people are assuming they're walking in perfect peace because they have all of their I's dotted and their T's crossed in the natural. They're assuming that. They're assuming that everything is peaceful around them. And I want to say this. He said also they're assuming they're walking in perfect peace, but, but, but they're actually ignoring the reality. Glory to God. So you can ignore the reality and call it faith, and it's not faith. When you walk by faith, you stare right in the face and say, I walk, by, I, I, I walk by faith and not by sight. You stare right in the face. You look at the reality right in the face. And, and, and your perfect peace is not graded upon you ignoring the reality, ignoring what's in front of you and saying, I'm walking in perfect peace. Perfect peace is this. Stare it right in the face and say, God is my peace. God is my perfect peace. God is my shalom. He is my peace, peace. God is my perfect peace. What else came out of that? By God's grace, we are simply to refuse. We are simply to refuse to be troubled or frightened in these circumstances, which could cost us peace. I want you to refuse to be frightened in these circumstances. You got to know that God is on each side of you. Angels are before you, angels are behind you. Goodness and peace follows you. Goodness, goodness and mercy follows you all the days of your life, whether it's up and down, whether it's a recession or the economy is, 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 is doing the best it's ever done. Goodness and mercy will always follow you. And to live in this perfect peace I'm talking about, you got to know that God is God. You got to know that you are trust. Your trust is fully anchored in him. And you have to know that you've stared the reality in the face and you've denounced the reality and you've announced to the reality that your God keeps you in perfect peace. You are in his arms, the God of comfort, the God of peace. And he says, I have you right here. 
I keep you. You are in my possession. The same way you keep your shoes in your closet. The same way you keep your tools in your toolbox. The same way you keep your curling irons in a certain, in a certain, certain drawer in the bathroom. He, God says, I keep you. You are in my possession. And when we're in God's possession, listen to me, we are walking and living in perfect peace. Now, you hop out of that and try to do it on your own, your mind can't even comprehend or quantify what's happening around you right now. It really can't. All it does is like a pinball. It bounces over here, bounces over here, ignores everything it sees, and they, and, and they say this, everything's going to be all right. How do you know that? What are you standing on to cause you to say that? Well, I mean, my God, we got six months of this, and I mean, hey, my industry is bulletproof, b- bulletproof and hey, 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 uh, look, I, I, all I know is, well, I hear what you're saying, but, but, but are, you, are, are you speaking from trust in the Lord, or are you speaking from the strength of your arm? Are you speaking from, I'm exempt from anything happening to my finances? Listen, l- l- let me tell you this to you. Put your trust in God right now. I don't care if you got four, 45 years of money put away. Put your trust in God right now. Why? You want to walk and learn how to live in perfect peace. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's look at this. <clears throat> oh, man. Go to Philippians 4. Go to Philippians 4. I want to pull this out of Philippians 4 and me to get this ready for me in the, the Passion Translation and the Amplified Version. Go to Philippians 4 real quick. Perfect peace. We just don't want peace. We want perfect peace. We don't want peace that comes from savings accounts. We don't want peace that comes from 401ks. We want perfect peace. Let me say this because I hear it in my spirit. When you live, when you live and walk in perfect peace, that's, that doesn't mean you defy natural wisdom. Now, you got to walk in wisdom. You got to do what the people are telling you to do. But let me say this to you. To live and walk in perfect peace, you have to know that God keeps you right there. You got to keep your mind stayed on him and your heart inclined to, to trusting uh, uh, your, the, the, the Lord your God. Philippians 4, very familiar scripture. We've been here uh, <clears throat> before the last, in, in, the, in the last two weeks. Uh, Philippians 4, verse 6, we're going to read it in the King James first. <clears throat> be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Verse 7, here it is. And the peace of God, the peace of God, which passes all human intellect, passes all understanding, watch this, shall keep, there it is again, shall keep, possess your heart's and minds through the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's look at this in the Passion Translation. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Watch this now. Watch the chief discipline. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. Offering your faith, feel requests, Before God, watch this, with overflowing gratitude, tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make answers known to you through who? Your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's see it in the Amplified. Thank you, Lord. What wonderful peace that transcends human understanding. Verse 6 in the Amplified Version. Do not be anxious or worried about any doggone thing. Now, I'm going to stick that in there. Don't be anxious or worried about any doggone thing. Don't worry about your 401k. Don't worry about what your job is going to do, how it's going to do it, when it's going to do it. You just know wherever you go, whatever happens, everything your hands touches. It turns to go. You prosper. You are the product, not the product you sell. You are the product, not the job you go to. You are anointed by God and blessed by God to prosper wherever and in whatever you do. So don't be anxious or worried about anything. 
But in everything, watch this, every circumstance, and we're in one right now, every circumstance and situation, and we're in one right now, by prayer, there's that chief discipline again, and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make, watch this, your specific request known to God. See, a lot of people are not worried about money, but, 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 but fear is gripping them about their loved one in another state. A lot of people have overcome, a lot of people have fixed, are fixed and firm on God is my source financially, but they're afraid about their health. He says, make your request specific, your specific request known to me. Listen, we do not fear the coronavirus. We respect it. And we adjust our lives accordingly. And we navigate differently now in life. But fear does not grip us in this thing. We just walk in a higher reality. And that reality is called faith. Faith. Thank you, Lord. Can I see this? I know I'm hitting you, hitting you with this media. Can I see this in the message translation as well? In the message translation as well. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. (laughs) Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come. Watch this. And settle you down. <laughs> Woo! When you're anxious for nothing, this piece I'm talking about, it's going to come when you pray and replace worry with prayers and not worry your prayers with worry. <laughs> he says, this thing's going to come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. It's wonderful when Christ comes and says, you know what, worry, get out of the way. I'm here. I'm firm and fixed now. I've replaced that fear about that loved one. I've replaced that fear about that job. I've replaced that fear about those finances. I've replaced that fear about that coronavirus. He says, he says when Christ shows up and he lives in you, he moves it out of the way. He displaces worry. He displaces it. And I want you to know, living in this perfect peace, you got you to gotta have a prayer life. You got to allow Jesus in. You, listen, God is perfecting everything that concerns us. Right now, learn to rest in the things of God. You don't know the future. There's only one omnipotent one, and that's God Almighty. He is all-knowing. You don't know it. So get skilled in resting in the promises of God. And when you feel fear coming on, you feel worry coming on, I want you to do this. Just lift your hands and start praying. Just lift your hands and say, Jesus, you're in control. Jesus, I lean into you. Jesus, I'm firm to fix in the promises of God. I'm firm to fix in the things of God. I know my covenant of protection. I know my covenant of prosperity. I'm firm and fixed in it. Just lift your hands. And and, and he wants to displace, move worry out of the way with shalom, shalom. With the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Listen to this. Perfect peace is knowing the facts and allowing God to be a chief comforter. (laughs) When we live in perfect peace, we know all the facts. We know about the six feet rule. We know how you can catch it. We know you got to wash your hands. We know all the facts. We know the, de- the death told the death. Right. We know all of that. But when you want to live, when we're, we're called to live in perfect peace because God is keeping us in perfect peace. Listen, perfect peace is knowing the facts and allowing God to be your chief comforter. Perfect peace is not ignoring the facts. It's knowing the facts. It's knowing this coronavirus inside out. It's knowing its capabilities. It's knowing what it can do. It's knowing how it spreads. And in that knowing, allow God to be your chief comforter. Allow God to be your chief comforter. 
There's men with 55 guns in the house, and guess what? They can't shoot this virus. We have billions of dollars in missiles and technology in our military, and guess what? They, 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 they can't hunt this virus down. They, they can't. And I'm here to tell you, how do we deal with this virus? We deal with this virus through prayer. Prayer is going to keep us in perfect peace. Prayer is going to keep us, keep our mind steadfast, firm, and fixed on God and God's promises concerning us. I said it earlier. Perfect peace is not ignoring the facts. Perfect peace is not ignoring the facts. And perfect peace is not ignoring the reality. Perfect peace is not ignoring the facts. And perfect peace is not ignoring the reality. It's knowing the facts, seeing the reality, and First Peter 5 said, and casting your cares or those worries or that anxiety upon the Lord. You know the facts, and, and guess what? You may be a little fearful when you get them. Here's what you do, according to 1 Peter 5, verse 7, cast those cares and anxiety over on God. That's walking in perfect peace. It's not ignoring stuff that's going on around you. It's not ignoring that 401ks are dropping 5% every day. It's, not, it's, not, it's, it's, it's knowing that and still walking in perfect peace. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, as I thought about this, war, this word peace, I thought about war. <laughs> and war is simply the opposite of peace. War is unresolved conflict that led to a battle. That's what a war is. It's unresolved conflict that led to a battle. Peace is resolved conflict that ended a battle. <laughs> and I'm telling you right now, living and walking in this perfect peace, leaning and relying on God, it ends the battle of the mind. It ends the battle of the worry and the anxiety. It ends the battle of worrying about tomorrow, what your job is going to do, what you may lose, how you're going to... It Listen, it ends the battle. And the battle is over. Why? Because God says, that's mine. <laughs> he said, that's mine. That belongs to me. You're not called to fight that. I own that. And I'm going to keep you in perfect peace. Amen? Glory to God. We have to grow in our ability to walk in this perfect peace. We have to grow in our ability to trust God. We got to grow in our ability to trust God. And that's okay. Because some people just came to church every Sunday, uh, never abided in the word, uh, in action, you know, as far as the word was going. Uh, they kind of knew a little bit about God and kind of knew a little bit about church, but they never had a prayer life. Now, now what you got to do is, because you can have it, you got to grow in your ability to trust God. And that's okay. You're discovering that. You're discovering that, man, I really got to grow in my ability to trust God because my natural eyes are ruling my peace. I have no peace. I, 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 can't, I, 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 I can't stand firm in God's word right now. I can't, I can't stand on the word of God. And, and, and that's okay. You got to learn. You, 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 you got to learn. You got to grow in your ability to trust God. Hallelujah. I wrote this down in my notes. Uncertainty is frightening to control freaks. <laughs> People who always want to be in control, always thought they were in control, always want to control everything, think they're in control of their lives. This thing is frightening to control freaks. And you don't want to be one. You just need to know, listen, God is in control. <laughs> if you lean and rely on him, he's going to keep you in perfect peace. You hop outside of him, man, your senses are going to dominate. Your reality is going to dominate you. And that's not what's supposed to happen for a person living, walking by faith and, and not by sight. We live in a higher reality. God is perfecting those things that concerns us, and you cannot allow your senses to dominate your reality. The word of God. You have to be consumed with the word of God. Amen? This is our opportunity to grow in trust. As we learn how to live and walk in this perfect peace, this is our opportunity to grow in trust. Trust in what? Trust in God. This is our opportunity to show, hey, we trust in God. We're not Christians that just go to church. We're not Christians that have family and we try to keep, put our family in check. And, and, and now all of a sudden, we're just as scared as them. 
We're just as frightened as them. We can't even encourage them because we're not firm. We discovered we're not firm in fixing the trust in, in the things of God. But I'm telling you, this is your opportunity to grow in trust. This is our opportunity to grow in our faith. This is our opportunity to grow in reliance on God. This is our opportunity. Thank you, Lord. Whew. I'm going to read these things to you. You know, God is good and he's worthy to be praised. I want you, you know, during the week, just break out in praise and thanking God for his perfect peace. Thanking God for him keeping you in perfect peace. Thanking God for him making a way out of nowhere. Thanking God for your daily bread. Thanking God for the prayers he's already answered. Thanking God for health. Thanking God for food on your table. Thanking God to hear your kids' voice in the morning. Thanking God to share a living room where you're working and your kids are working doing that schoolwork. Thanking God for that. That's a beautiful thing. And you need to start capturing those memories instead of complaining about them. Because they're very rare in, in, in today's time. Where the mother, the father, and the kids are occupied in their occupation. For, for, for the adults, it's work. For the kids, their occupation is making straight A's <laughs> and, good, get, and getting good grades. That's a rare thing for us to be able to do that all together. And we got to thank God for that. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Now, <clears throat> I want you to write this down. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to write this down. God's love for us God's love for us should always keep us in a perpetual state of peace. Perpetual, ongoing. Not your love for God. God's love for you should always keep you in a perpetual state of peace. His love should always keep you in a perpetual state of peace. Of peace. And according to Isaiah 26, let's go back there uh, uh, one more time here. Let's go back there and look at this. I want to pull this out and show it to you so you can see it, so you can stand on it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Watch this. Watch this now. <clears throat> Before we read the scripture again, God's perfect peace starts with God. And it ends with God. God's perfect peace, according to scripture, it starts with God and it ends with God. Watch this. You will keep him. Isaiah is talking about God. It's starting with God. God, you will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in you. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For, the Lord, for in the Lord, Jehovah is everlasting strength. Everlasting strength. It started with God and it ended with God. God is our everlasting strength. It starts with God, this perfect peace, and it ends with God. For he bringeth down them that dwell on high, the lofty city, he laid low, he laid low, he laid it low. Watch this now. Even to the ground, he bringeth it even to the dust. Verse 6, the foot shall tread it down, even feet to the feet of the poor, and the steps of the needy. Here's the thing. God, the perfect peace, starts with him and ends with him. So what do we do? Just stand between it and trust God. All I know is it starts with him. You will keep them in perfect peace. You will keep them, God. And it ends with the rock of the ages, the everlasting strength. God has everlasting strength. So he bookends our life with perfect peace and say, you, you, in the middle here, in the middle here, Jesus told you that you're going to have trouble and tribulations, but be of good cheer because he's overcome the world. He says, I got your book in. I got your book in with perfect peace. I'm on the beginning of it and I'm on the end of it. All you got to do is learn how to walk in and trust me and rely on me and not let your mind wander over and trust on the world system. Trust in the world system. You trust in your living God. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So perfect peace starts with God and ends with God. I want you to have peace beyond the current circumstances. When you live and walk in this perfect peace, you have peace beyond the current circumstances. 
You know, the world wants to forecast doom and gloom to us. You got to start forecasting the promises of God. (laughs) You got to start praying the promises of God over your life because if you're not careful, you will you will pay attention to their forecast and ignore your covenant. No, you got to speak the promises of God and forecast them over your life. Faith in Christ. Watch this now. Matter of fact, I want you to repeat this after me right there in your home. My faith in Christ has been a great empowering presence in my life. Helping me walk strong when so often I feel weak. It's okay to repeat that. It's okay to say that because we've all been weak during this thing. We've all had questions during this thing. We've all been caught in between first and second base. And, and man, when am I going to get attacked? We've all been there. But guess what? God is bigger. God is bigger. Faith in Christ. Repeat this. My faith in Christ has been my great empowering, has been a great empowering presence in my life. Girl, how you doing? My faith in Christ has been a great empowering presence in my life. Well, how are the kids doing? All of y'all in the house at one time. My faith in Christ has been a great empowering presence in my life. Well, I tell you what, with teenagers in the house, man, they're going in that refrigerator 155 times a day. What's your grocery bill like? That light bill is going to go up now with everybody in the house. Uh, that's fine. My faith in Christ is a, it has a great empowering presence in my life. Well, I'm just saying now, you can't go up there to see your mama. You can't go down there to see your mama. You can't go to see your daddy. You can't go, see, go to see your parents. H- how are they doing? Uh, I know God has got them taken care of because my faith in Christ is a, has a great empowering presence in my life. Your faith in Christ, you, it's, it's a great empowering presence in your life. Mm. In the midst of extraordinary challenges, these are thoughts coming out of Isaiah, coming out of Philippians 4. In the midst of extraordinary challenges that this world is going through, that you may be going through with your schedules, with your job and your kids, and you're trying to, you know, school teachers that has to teach kids and have kids is being taught by another teacher, and all of that is under one roof. So think about that. In the midst of extraordinary challenges, Christ and his empowering presence should bring us peace. In the midst of extraordinary challenges, I want you to know Christ and his empowering presence brings us peace. This perfect peace. He brings it to us. And don't rob yourself trying to figure it out yourself. You're robbing yourself. Don't rob yourself trying to handle everything on your own. How do you reward yourself in this time with extraordinary challenges? Drop your knees. Drop to your knees. Lift your hand as a sign of surrenderance. And say, God, I've never, I've never uh, schooled my kids from home. I've never, I, I've never done it, but Lord, I receive your empowering presence to help me through it. Lord, I've never had the whole family in the house 24 hours a day. I receive your empowering presence for us to walk in kindness, for us to walk in love, for us to walk in, in this kindness, this love, this ease, In this home, I receive your empowering presence. But don't get arrogant and say, I don't don't need your presence. I can handle this. And you know what? The husband has already stormed out on you. The wife has already fanned you out of that office and said, get out of here. I'm on a conference call and you got offended. You was on your conference call and your three-year-old stormed in the room. And they're like, my God, dad is like a big gorilla in there. He's mean as a junkyard dog. And you don't, look, you got to let Christ be your empowering presence when you are working 24-7 with your wife and your little anchor biters running around or your grown men and women in that house and eating up everything. You got to let Christ anchor you down and be your empowering presence. Otherwise, you want to cut some jokers. Otherwise, your kids can't get their work done because they're, they're, you're, threatening them with, you're threatening your kids in the middle of their schooling with being grounded when they finish. Think about that. How inspiring is that? Well, when I finish my homework, I can't play no Xbox. 
I can't do no Fortnite. I can't do that. Why can't you do it? Well, I let my feet hit the ground uh, to go get me some orange juice there. And, and my mind hadn't clicked that I'm not at school. I'm at home. So if I get thirsty, I hop on the floor and take my little four-year-old feet over here to the fridge. But, man, my mom caught me in that fridge, and she asked me, what in the world are you doing away from your home? Why are you away from your class? Well, I tell you what, no fortnight when you get done with this. Just how empowering is that? You got to let Christ be your empowering presence in the midst of unstable circumstances. You just do. And married folks, you got to do the same thing. Because I'm working in the house with my wife, and I'm telling you, it's like uh, we love one another. I'm talking our love is deep, profound. But I tell you what, I, I, I can hear, I, can, I, I hear stuff. The TV is too loud. TV is too loud. Yeah, uh, where's my laptop cord at? Uh, your laptop cord, that, that's my laptop cord. That, no, it's mine. Pl please just bring me. Yeah, and it's like, wow. So we're, we're, look. Christ has got to be our empowering presence as two minds occupy one space. Guess what? Some people got eight minds occupying one space. Christ has got to be your empowering presence to walk in this perfect peace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Perfect peace comes not from the absence of bad circumstances, Perfect peace does not come from the absence of bad circumstances. Perfect peace does not come from the absence of bad circumstances, but the reassuring presence of God, <laughs> despite the circumstances. Let me say that again. Perfect peace does not come from the absence of bad circumstances, but the reassuring presence of God, despite the circumstances. That's where perfect peace comes from. Despite what's going on around me, God is keeping me in, in, in his perfect peace. Despite what's going on around me, uh, Lord, I receive your daily bread. I'm not asking for weekly bread. I'm not asking for monthly bread. I receive bread daily. I thank you, Lord, for your, for your nourishment uh, to my body, me and my family. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for that. Why? You promised me daily bread. Paul says, I, I, he's, Paul says whatever state I'm in, I've learned. I've just learned to be content. I've learned to trust God. I've learned in this world it's going to be up, it's going to be down. I've learned in this world you're going to have money, you're not going to have money. I learned in this world you, 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 sickness can hit your body and God, God can heal you. I've Look, regardless of the circumstances, you want to keep your reliance and your trust in God and be content knowing that God has you kept in his perfect peace. Thank you, Lord. Woo, glory to God. Can I see Isaiah in the Amplified? Uh, I just want to read this real quick and, and uh, allow the word to speak to us. Isaiah 26 in the Amplified. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. You will keep in perfect and constant peace. The ones whose mind stay, is steadfast, that is committed and focused on you. I want this to sink into you. Committed and focused on you. Next verse. In both inclination and character. We read this at the beginning of the service. Because he trusts and takes refuge in you with hope and confident expectation. Next verse. Trust. I want you to trust confidently in the Lord forever. This is your opportunity just to trust God. This is your opportunity just to say, God, I trust you. I don't lean to my own understanding. I acknowledge you in all my ways. I trust you. He is your fortress, your shield, your banner. For the, love, for the Lord God is our everlasting rock. Confidently trust in the Lord. Confidently trust in the Lord. I want you to trust in the Lord the same way you trust in your, in, in your sectional, in, in, in your love seat, in your recliner, in your sofa, in your kitchen chair. You don't pull out your kitchen chair and wonder if you can sit down. You pull out your kitchen chair and you just flop down. 
You walk into your family room and you just flop down. Why? You know that chair is going to catch you. You know that chair is going to uphold you. This perfect peace I'm talking about, this trust in God that I'm talking about, you just got to flat out just anchor yourself down and just fall back into the arms of God and cast all of your cares upon him. Why? Not because you care for him. It's because he cares for you. See, this perfect peace cannot be anchored in your love for God. It's got to be anchored in God's love for you. He keeps you in perfect peace. He is the everlasting rock. He has everlasting strength that's going to take us through this thing. You know, Madrach, uh, 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 Madrach, Meshach, and Abednego, those guys, those guys, Shadrach, those guys that were in that fiery furnace. Think about this. So at first they said, we're not going to bow down. We're just not going to do that. To no kind of image, we're just not going to do it. Not going to happen. We're just not going to do it. He said, okay, well, okay, you're going to go ahead and obey your God? Oh, go ahead and obey your God. And, 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 and one translation says, the fiery furnace was seven to ten times hotter than it normally was. Matter of fact, the guys who threw them in it, they got burned up. But the king says, man, I, I see a fourth man in there. There was a fourth man in there. And it was the prince of peace right in the midst of fire. They wouldn't touch no smell of smoke whatsoever. And I'm here to tell you, this prince of peace, this perfect peace I'm talking about, you're going to come out of this thing. People say, oh, my God, your industry is very vulnerable. I got a fourth man with me. <laughs> the fourth man is with me. I, I'm, I'm just, according to your age group, now you're, not, now you're high risk. I, I, the, the fourth man is with me. He's with me. It may be fiery. It may be hot. It may be uncertain. It may be up. It may be down. It may be in. It may be out. It may be light. It may be dark. But all I know is this Prince of Peace, this Jehovah Shalom, my Lord and Savior, is with me in every situation, every circumstance, every report. He's with me, and I choose to live and walk in this perfect peace that God promised to keep me in. Were you blessed by the word today? Hallelujah. Just right there in your living room, go ahead and lift your hands and begin to praise God. Begin to open your mouth and let God know that you are in perfect peace. Begin to open your mouth and let God know that you thank him for your daily bread. Begin to just open your mouth and let God know. that you. So, so why am I thanking him? Well, Philippians 4 said, go ahead and thank him. Why? Because he's already answered your prayer. He's already made provision for you. He's already got your future taken care of. So he said, look, all I need you to do is go ahead and thank me. Thank me. And it's not like a, it's not like a natural thank you. It's not like, you know, uh, 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 somebody hand you something and you say thank you. He said, no, 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 we don't work like that. You thank me because I've already done it. You thank me because I've already given it to you. You just say thank. That's why I say with supplication and thanksgiving, you be excited about what you already have from God. He said, man, you got to come. He said, he said, look, he said, look, you don't have to tell me thank you. When I give you something, I already gave it to you. Just praise me in thanks. Praise me in thanks. And thank your Lord right there in your living room. And I want you to learn how to live and walk in perfect peace. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, listen, we don't want to let you go without giving you, give you an opportunity to get, to get born again. And that's just simply give your life to Christ. We have tabs right there on the screen where you can click. And uh, there should be a phone number there, and people can walk you through the prayer of salvation. Number one, number two, if you want to rededicate your life, you know, it's like, man, I've been living in fear. Things have been coming off my mouth that should not be coming off my mouth. You want faith coming off your mouth, not fear. You want promises coming off your mouth, not negative stuff about what's going to happen. The promises of God coming. And if, if you want to rededicate your life back to God, I said, Lord, I just want to draw close to you in this time. In this time of chaos and uncertainty, I want to rededicate my life back to you. Number three, if you want to receive the, the, the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the, of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, if you want to receive that, you can click on that tab. We've got people right there on that 800, 800 number right there that, 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 that will say a prayer with you. And last but not least, if God is calling you to join XL Church, we're a simple church. We're very simple. We are spiritual traffic cops pointing you to God. We are spiritual traffic cops pointing you to God, and we believe that when you anchor your life in God, according to John 15, 1, and you're a branch connected to the true vine, that you will excel in God and you will excel in life. 
We believe that you should excel in God and you should excel in life. When you can't excel in God, if a personality is what you come to church for, no, 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 no. You, ha- you must have a relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You must be a branch that abides in him. And that is what we believe. We point you to God. We encourage you in the things of God, but we are not your God. You must have a personal relationship with your God. And here at XL Church, we believe when that happens, you excel in God and you excel in life. I give into, give into you four things. The opportunity to get born again, rededicate your life, receive the Holy Spirit, and join the church. I pray that God encourages you this morning and the Word encourages you this morning. Be on the lookout for the small groups. That's going to happen Wednesday there. If you haven't joined or registered yet for the eConnect small groups, I encourage you to do so. Also, the text to give, you can give right there. And there will be an email going out. Several of you have emailed us and said, hey, I, I was always in the building and I always gave an offering, uh, offering bucket there, but I'm having trouble setting this uh, text to give up. We're going to send you out some instructions so you can get set up right there on your mobile device and your desktop right there at home uh, for you to honor the Lord like uh, Minister Nikki taught us this morning. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all of your, way, all of your ways and he will direct your past. On behalf of Pastor Zephyr, myself, and XL Church, we bless you. We pray a prayer of prosperity over you. We pray a prayer, of, a prayer of peace over you. And we declare that you live and walk in this peace, this perfect peace that God promised that passes all understanding. And God, we just declare in the name of Jesus, protection, angels. We pray a hedge of protection over your life, over your family, over your family, in state, out of state. And Father, we just thank you that the perfect peace reigns and rules in their generations, in your generation, both up and down. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all of the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And XL Church said, amen. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you guys in the small groups Wednesday. And be on the lookout for announcements via your text, your email, or our church page right there on Facebook. We love you. Happy